day, traditional opening day, guy. Yes, sir. Mound visit at the right hour. I know there's still games going on. Case, good to have Absolutely. you. I know you're rocking your your team right mm-hmm. there. And uh, we are back excited for baseball season as you guys are. And welcome to another edition of Mound Visit. Today, Case, we got lots on tap to talk about. Day one, yeah. it's uh, really exciting, Yes, man. we do. And before we talk about all that, we want to remind everyone watching, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mound Visit. You can find us there if you want to watch us. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever you want to do. And follow us on social media. Chat with us there. We love hearing from you guys. So, But yes... A lot going on in baseball today. We had a full slate, pretty much, of opening day. I know we the season technically started in Seoul, but... Yeah, on the other side of the planet. Yeah. But, you know, hey, that was a practice run. Because it, That's it right. Is, today should be... Today should be. How we have Brother and Sister Day, Father's Day, Arbor Day, Grilled Cheese Day, and we don't have opening day as a national uh. holiday. Fathers, sons, mothers, daughters, families, we should have off today. It's a national pastime. Hey, man. How are we not having this figured out? Can we get the next president to write a bill <laughs> to say we have baseball season is now in session? Come Whoever on. that is would have my vote so quickly if that was part of their legislation. Uh, That's it. So I, I love it. that. You got 15 – how many – how many how many billions of people are, are baseball fans or millions? So I say. I well, I mean, it, they if have it's a billion baseball fans, I mean, there's got yes, right? There's got how many people? Billion people? There's seven ish billion people on the planet. Seven eight billion people. Listen, if we get now that this game's global, yeah. right? I'm seeing ads for we're getting cricket players to turn to baseball players. They're mm-hmm. trying to get this game global. I mean, if we're not, you know, if we're not taking a sneak peek on. The, the disclosure of what we're trying to do here, right? Yeah, you're right. I mean, don't gamble on baseball, but this has been brought to you by DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids. I, like, in all seriousness, yes, DraftKings, you can sponsor us. But, in all, but like, I think let's start with that before we get into any of the games because, obviously, it's been, it's been a little bit since we recorded. But that's the biggest story heading into the baseball season. And... I would love to get your perspective on on the entire because I, for those who listen to this show, you know out there that we love talking about Shohei Otani and how how awesome he is. But this is God, a di- he's the best. He's the face of baseball. Absolutely, he's no the face doubt. of baseball. But this is a diff- This but, is not the way we want to be talking about him. <laughs> I think. Listen, Pete Rose better be standing in Cooperstown with a jock strap on. And waiting for them to open that door for where his his locker should be in there. Come on, guy. We've 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 let guys who did steroids scandal. It's, it's a shame. Like right, this is this is a player who's doing unbelievable things, never seen before, yeah. unprecedented. And I hate this when this happens because we love to see the rise of a superstar or a celebrity, and then it's like wham. We love to just create scandal and have something to talk about we can't just stay on the positive side but if you did wrong they're gonna find out and i just hope that the truth comes out and i'm praying that the guy didn't do it but i can't imagine if you if you have millions of dollars in your bank account and all of a sudden it's five million off or whatever the number is is off when you're checking your account maybe you don't check your account somebody's checking the account Somebody checking the account that you go, wait, somebody's taking some serious money from you. I, I, I got to find that a little hard to it, believe. I, yeah. But but he went too far. We go, we go for today. With all that distraction, still hit a let's double. talk about yeah, that, dude. I know. Still <laughs> locked yeah. in. Okay. You're absolutely still right. It, it's funny in. because he had that whole press conference. And this is the last thing we'll talk about for that. Because it's true. We're not going to know anything until... Uh, you know, it, it's a federal investigation, so they've got to do that entire thing, and we're not going to know anything until that's done. But I think the the ma- the two things that have been left unanswered to me are, like you brought up, how did he not know that this money was being funneled out of his bank account? That's the part that's still a little bit, you know, murky hey, man, to me. I, it's know, interesting. I, I've had 12 financial investors. They were not all good, and they were okay. not all right. 
Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna defend him because I okay. don't want to start off go, okay. our go, go, show go. taint tainting the best the game's best player. I good, don't. Good. Okay, he's a pitcher. I love him, uh, and I think he's great for the game. Like I, I just pray that man that we don't need Me more too. scandal. We've oh, got God, fans back. We got fans loving baseball. Yeah. There's so much good stuff going on, but uh, I just hope that that doesn't take steal the thunder. I mean, the Dodgers have enough good stuff going on, and uh, I mean, what 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 murderers row they have? The Yankees uh, and the American League, Oof. they got some stuff going on. It was just yep. a powerful start to the to the first day of baseball yeah. here in the in the states, man. Well, you know, I think right off the bat, the first first game of the day. And it, it was kind of interesting because we talked to Latroy Hawkins about this on our last episode when we talked about Rendon and everything. And it was kind of it was kind of poetic that he was the first at bat of the major league season. I thought that was very interesting. Um, but right. how about Mike Trout first at bat, first home run of the season? Yeah. I mean, that guy. I, are we? Can we? Is it fair to say that every single baseball fan is praying for him to have a full healthy season? Is that fair to say? You think? Uh, I'm rooting for that guy. I was sitting there going like, man, I, that guy probably, I, if he doesn't cry when he wins, I don't know. Because there's guys that play their whole career and never win a World Series. Yeah. And I just feel like Mike Trout is one of those people that I'm rooting for to have that experience in his career. I mean, you can win all the personal accolades. Right. Um man i just would feel like i didn't accomplish one big thing and, and to say that i got that world series title under your belt that's that's tough and uh yeah. i'm rooting for the guy i don't think it's going to happen in anaheim i hate to say that i, I don't know. think it's going to happen i i will a guy like that ever get a chance to join somewhere and uh, shoot you put him in the Yankees lineup or somewhere Dodgers lineup. Where does that guy fit in the lineup? Uh, I mean, you can mix it up anywhere you want, but mm-hmm. put him in leadoff in the Dodgers lineup, <laughs> or it's two behind Mookie Betts. Yeah, it, uh, well, I don't know, it, man. It's, there's a lot of places you can go with that, but again, it, it's there's a lot of things going on. It's only one game in, and we uh, obviously are not short on what to talk about. Mm-hmm. Is is there anything other than that? I know we obviously Trout stood out to me. Was there anything else that stood out to you? I mean, I know your your Blue Jays and your Pirates played today. My Mets had yep. got rained out, so so that they're playing tomorrow. But what stood out to you? Maybe it could be from Pirates Blue Jays. But was there anything that well, I'm kind of grabbed you. your attention? I'm happy. I'm, hap- I'm happy that the, the Jays started off right in they Tampa. Did. I'm always mm-hmm. they're always a team that I fear. I never liked playing there. They were always good. Their analytics are probably the best in baseball. Yeah, um, not talked about enough, but maybe the underground. Nobody's going to get that yeah. recipe to Kentucky Fried Chicken that they have. Yeah, that's right. Um, but Pittsburgh, yeah, they're coming out hot. I know a lot of people around here always the, – the talk is I was at my son's game, and mm-hmm. um, they're always like, hey, what do you think the team's going to look like this year? I'm like, I, I, the same as it ever is. It's going to be 70, 80 wins is what we're pigeon on. And who are we – what team are we feeding down the home, you know, home stretch? Mm-hmm. Oh. Who, who, the Yang, who's stealing? Who's stealing all our prospects? Oh. Um, I know. So it, that's always the topic. But um, what stood out? Um, God, I just think you know Soto being being the big talk of of what what he's provided to that Yankee lineup, and then mm-hmm. throwing out throwing out you know a big a big out. Um, yeah, like a huge plate, out. A plate. That was a huge yeah. out, man. And the yeah. guy just shows her that he's not just one dimensional. Um, you know, that's why I used to love watching Dave Winfield, man, as a kid. Mm-hmm. He was just one of those kind of players that you go right field, you know, commands big. That was Judge's territory, but um, before. Mm-hmm. Um, but having Soda out there, man, like, wow. I just feel like he's going to be what they, they need to t- maybe get them over the top. You know, the Yankees haven't won in a while. Um, yeah, they didn't make the, they things. didn't make the playoffs last year. I mean, this is it, you know, it it's not it's not do or die, but it's you know, they are they're under some pressure, for sure. They are under yeah. some pressure, and I think the you know, 
especially when you go and you make a move to bring a Juan Soto in, uh, it's it's important that that move pays dividends. And so um, I'm I'm very interested to see what's going to happen with the Yankees this year uh, because it, losing Garrett Cole that was a big blow. That was a big blow to their rotation. Um, and it's interesting because it's interesting to see how. I guess for me, just looking at it from an outside perspective on paper, it's interesting to see how, how much different a rotation or a lineup looks with, with, or without one guy. And you look at that lineup without Juan Soto and you're like, okay, it's pretty much the same lineup that they had last year. You know, obviously Aaron judge is arguably the best hitter in baseball. So that part scares you, but, but then it's like you add Juan Soto and now you've got another one of, if not the best hitters in baseball. And it just makes it makes the lineup that much longer. And then you flip over to their pitching staff and you look at Garrett Cole, who, you know, is just a, the definition of a workhorse, someone that you uh, strapped. You did. Did you pitch with him? in? yeah. For, yeah. yeah, right. In, in Pittsburgh. Um, yeah. And, you know, someone who's been ultra reliable over the last few years, obviously the Cy Young winner, you lose him for a, an extended period of time that hurt that hurts that's a that's a tough blow to your yeah, rotation because now everybody else has got to step up you know yeah well that's why i said that, you know having guys like snell or montgomery they had chances to get guys like that too instead of maybe relying on a prospect but again no one can tell you how to spend the money that's a, that's, yep. a, that's a lot of money coming with those those names but the al east to me uh another Watching what the Orioles did, what they went 101 games last year. Yeah, they did. Um, they picked up picked up their ace. Yep. Um, and like I said, he came up big today. Corbin Burns. Man, Burns was great. Uh, going from Milwaukee, which is like I said, a weaker division. When you go sure. into the AL East and to punch out 11, uh, to come out, just you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how he fares against that Yankee lineup, against um, some powerhouse teams that are in that division. Um, cause everyone there's, there's not a bad team in the AL East, in my opinion, when you go yep. in there, you better come with your a game. I've said it before, man, Tyson uppercut punches every night. And speaking of Tyson, the sidebar right there, man, <laughs> who's going to win that fight? If it's, if, 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 if something's rigged, if, it's a, if, it's a lose. Isn't that the definition of a lose, lose? If you're Jake Paul. Yeah, because if you win, it's like okay, great, you beat an almost sixty-year-old boxer, and if you lose, yeah. you lost to an almost sixty-year-old man. So well, listen, <laughs> Merriweather and Conor McGregor fight—that was rigged. That was all show. I feel like this is a show. Yeah, of course. Uh, there's what? What are we? What are we to believe anymore? <laughs> right? <laughs> is there any? Is there anything that we can believe? Baseball is our fairy tale. It's our real. Here's the thing I like about reality TV. Okay. Baseball to me is the realest thing. Uh, I, I I said it to all my fraternity brothers. You get to do superhero things, having that adrenal pump. You know it, Case. You're playing. You know, of course. Are you in that over forty league still? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I but am Frank, still in that league. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the adrenaline pump for you, you know, and getting yeah. the beer and chick, chicken wings after these games. That's right. That's right. No, to see these freaks of nature, the O'Neill Cruises and the De La Cruises mm. and the Mike Trouts, and to see them do what they do, uh, the intensity that comes with preparing. People don't know the off season turns into spring training, turns yeah. into game number one, game turns into game one sixty two, turns into eleven games, the Yellow Brick Road to the World Series. There's <laughs> so much that's going to happen. It is the most real story, like you said. We got scandal, we got injuries, we got trades, we got drama. I mean, ups and downs and so much uh, emotion, right? Yeah. Physical, mental, emotional things that transpire in the course of 162 plus games. And there's there's so many good stories. There'll be a lot of feel-good stories. Hopefully, like I said, um, more good than bad. I, I'm rooting for We We need good stuff. You know that's why I love reading. I'm reading Deion Sanders' book, a former mm. two, two two major league sport athlete, right? And yeah, the positivity that he brings it's it's like there is enough for everybody to enjoy. And I know it's not all sunshine and rainbows, 
Right. Right? We got to talk about the, the good and the bad and the ugly. Of course. But like I said, it's 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 where it's where that fine line of hate and fans getting crazy. It's like, hey, let 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 everybody get their due, and you know, if the other man beats you, tip your cap, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes what you got to do, yeah, tip your yeah. cap. Well, I mean, you know that better than anyone as a closer, because that's the highest of highs and the lowest of lows at that at that position. Well, so, can can before we talk a little bit more about about what's going on today but i want to ask you what some of your more special opening day memories are if you can remember some of them obviously you know it's the perfect time to do it so i'm sure around this time you know we've talked about it at spring training where you're kind of like every time spring training comes around even though you've been out of the game for a little bit you still you still feel it a little bit because this is the time where you generally start getting ready to play talk about opening day a little bit and some of if you have a couple memories from from that time yeah again go from the transition from spring training i felt those hours during the afternoon like after one two o'clock because you're up so early in spring training and if you get to go home go home early after you get your work in um i remember coming home eating lunch and then taking a power nap to get ready for whatever I would need to do with my kids, throw them around the pool, mm-hmm. go fishing, all that. But opening day, um, you're excited because you don't have to wake up early anymore. It's like, again, that transition of getting your family to, you know, uh, your home your home city. Right. Um, that feeling, getting in a routine, I think, is really the feeling of, like, you can exhale and you go, all right, now I can get settled and get locked in. And for me, I was like, I hope I don't get traded because I jumped around, boom, all these jerseys bouncing around. That's what right. was the feeling? The the flyover, um, oh. the national anthem. To me, I never took that for granted, man. They always honor mm. the troops. Um, you know, we're we're very blessed, and I look yeah. at like the emphasis we put on sports entertainment and just entertainment in our in our society and our culture. And just what deviates from that, right? We, we have a show talking about Major League Baseball. We wouldn't be here. I always say the media has a job because why? Because the product is on the field. All that goes into it. That's why I thanked uh, on my Instagram today all the people that are part of it. Not just yeah. the players. All the personnel right. and, and, and right. all the people that put the show on so that we can enjoy this wonderful game that happens Absolutely. every day, man. It happens every day. So I always felt that exuberance of like, wow, I get to do this for another year, you know? And I was always felt like it was grateful. But, boy, I'll tell you, when I watched the Pirates uh, in extra innings, yeah, we watched the end of that game here yeah. at the barn. Mm-hmm. And I just remember that feeling of like, okay, now I feel all that angst. Like, okay, I can get ready. And usually you had a day off in between, even though, right? you know, we <laughs> why would you have a day off in between – in Miami with a dome, I, I don't know. <laughs> Got to get adjusted to the day off for that rain out you might have in the dome. It's, that's why, yeah, that's why it's there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, it's um, it's a great time. I, I just wish the players well, man. I want to see good storylines. I want to see um, things that happen, some unfinished business for people. Mm-hmm. You know, the storylines that come out of it. There's there's a ton of them. There's gonna be a ton of them. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the best part, and I think you know. It's opening day is the best because no matter what expectations as a fan or as a team you have going into that season, opening day is the chance to just appreciate watching your team play before it gets into those dog days of June and July and August. And I, and I wonder if it's the same for the players as well. And, and this would, this is a good question for you, obviously, because and your boy Frank, your boy right. Frank. <laughs> luckily, Frank. the Mets didn't. Luckily, the Mets didn't play today, so he had a, a day he off. Settled of, down. Uh, he settled. Yeah. He settled. His heart rate wasn't too jacked today, but um, but is that it? Does that happen for the players? Because I feel like, like I just said, as as a fan, you know, no matter no matter what my expectations are for for my team, I go into opening day every year with some optimism and. No matter, like I said, no matter those expectations, you're watching opening day because it is. It's that holiday, and you're just enjoying watching 
watching well, the team. It's, it's, and call it's, it the second. Call it the second New Year's Day. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's a New Year's resolution. The hope. Uh, right. Or false. Or false hope. You're right. Right. <laughs> yeah, got a lot of false hope out there for a lot of teams. But do you do you uh, feel that as? as do the players? Do you guys feel that when you're when you're getting suited up for opening day? No matter what you're projected to do, because you guys know that. You know what I mean. I know you, as players, you probably try to, you know, just, you know, stay as focused as possible. But I'm sure you guy, hear things. Well, your job is, you know, it's it's the. It's, I looked at it like the stats are going to be on the back of my baseball card. Yeah, that is my contribution. What I was able to bring to the table to my team. Can sure. I help my team? win more games than lose more games that was that was the goal that's the optimism you want to live up to that expectation because nobody i don't care especially now that you got dollar signs attached to guys names Um, contracts are just it's prevalent information everybody knows what they Mm -hmm. have in their bank account um um, so the whole world will know just like donald trump uh i guess we're gonna know otani's account right soon (laughs) under investigation um no the the hope the hope of of uh, you know just just being able to be there at the end is yeah. the ultimate is the ultimate dream man and just knowing how you get close and that's why as players you're constantly walking into a stadium and going like who's got more wins than me mm-hmm. who's got more strikeouts than me you want to be a, it's it's that it's that bar of chasing not being a stat rat but being more sure. of like I I'm just as good or I'm better than I gotta beat that guy. Yeah, I'm better yeah, yeah. than him. Sure. You know, it, it's, it's a level of competition. And you know what? Guess what? You're also competing against guys on your own team, man. Because it's like, hey, you went out and shoved. You, you sh- went seven and two-thirds innings. Mm-hmm. I'm going eight eight and two-thirds innings. I'm throwing a CG. Yeah. Right? So that, that level of pushing each other is good. It's yeah. good if, 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 it's, if it's a healthy competition. Of course. Right? And that's, that's, that's with... I'm genuinely rooting for you. I'm genuinely pulling for you. Hey, man, I want to work out with you, just like mm. Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed did at one yeah, point, yeah. right? They yeah. were, they were, they respected each other. They were like, man, we're on the same, we're pulling this rope the same freaking way, man. We're mm-hmm. going, and I need you. Yeah, you know, right, the, right, the, right. So we had Cervelli on. Yeah. The best, the best thing that I picked up from that, or what I recall, was how he said the older guys didn't. I mean, yeah, they might have ribbed him and messed around yeah. with him. But they made him feel like, dude, we need you. So you need to make I need to make you feel comfortable because if you're uncomfortable and scared and nervous, mm-hmm. that could cost us a game or two. I need to yeah. make you feel like, yo, you're you're here for a reason. Right. You're good enough to hang with the fellas. You're in this club with us. Yeah. And we're taking you with us and we're gonna protect you. I think when you <laughs> I'm watching it even with my own son. Yeah. Some some of these amateur hour coaches and, and people, it's like, dude, set you set your team, your players up for success. Sure. When of you course. don't do that, this is a game of confidence. This is mm-hmm. a game of confidence. If you can't roll in there and prepare yourself to be confident, whether you're 0 for 3 or 3 for 3, you're going to have confidence having a bad day, right? Yeah. Because you hit three balls squared up, right? Or yeah. if you sit there and you hit two little squibbers and you're 2 for 3 in the box score, you know. Do you feel mm-hmm. good? I don't know, but maybe that two for three, even though you got, you're like, well, geez, I, I'm relaxed now. There's right. just a, there's just a mindset that you go, that hamster wheel's going, and you have to lie to yourself, or trick yourself, or convince yourself hmm. that I'm ready, I'm prepared, and I'll take it any way I can get it. I'm gonna take my licks, yeah, and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna throw some punches, and it's just having that confidence to that degree, so that. That sense of hope, that sense of newness, that yeah. new beginning. I had a bad yeah. year last year. I had a good year last year. I think it's harder recovering to say, "Wow, I got an MVP." Or I is it hard to repeat? It's it's right. hard to repeat. I got to follow young. that up again this year. Right, right. That's pressure, man. That's like yeah. whoa. I know there was times when I was like, "Whoa, I did that." You can't look. You got to have blinders on. You got to go. Whoa. You start yeah. getting a little caught up in how did I do that or Sure. You know, it's lonely mm-hmm. at the top. It's even lonelier at the bottom. But mm. you know, it's like right. I don't know. I'm I'm branching. No, but, uh, no, 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 no. It's good. But it, it's it's interesting because it opening day and the beginning of the season is it, it's such an interesting time because you know everybody talks about how long of a season 
how long the baseball season is. And, and it's, you know, it, you, and nobody wants to overreact to things, you know, the first week of the season or the first game or whatever. But as fans, we all, we all love to do that, of course. But at the same time, it's like getting, I, I'm getting off to a good start is, is very important as a team. And I wanted to ask you this because obviously you've been a part of, of very successful teams that have made deep playoff runs. And you've also been a part of some teams that, you know, didn't have that same sort of success. So, I mean, you yes. talked about the, you would, uh, when we had Jeff Frank Cora on, he, you guys Oof. talked about sitting, you know, winning two games in April or whatever it was. And just, Painful. you know, five. yeah, exactly. Five, five right? Five games. Great. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to sell you that short. A, it's a pen, pen is painful, but we, we mustered out five and squeaked out five. But, but so my question is, you know, how do you as a player or as a clubhouse, I guess, how do you balance that as the season begins? And, I guess, how do you not put too much pressure on yourself to start the year, but also realize that, okay, you know, now we're at the point that these games matter. What did you see or how did you see that differentiate or did it between the teams that you were on that were successful and the teams that were in, I guess? Well, you know, I use this word. People don't like it, don't like it. I don't care. Chemistry, man. If you have somebody that's loose and goose, and there's all different kinds of guys that make the squad yeah. feel comfortable. And everything mm -hmm. has to be cohesive. Um, in your workplace, right, if you have a job and you, you can't stand seeing somebody, if it something happens, you're expecting drama or you're just a problem, right? Sure. Instead of that, you got to have an air of like, I'll use Joe Madden, great, right? All mm -hmm. these zany things yeah. that that guy created in the clubhouse. That's a perfect example for me. He made it fun. These guys get to play a game for f fun. Yes, they're doing it for a job, but gosh darn it, man, have some freaking fun. Mm. I can't, I, 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 you know, you take it for granted. Like, oh, if it becomes a job or you make it heavy, mm. it's going to be exactly what you set it out to be. Yeah. Right? If you sit there and say, I'm grateful. I think you could say I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we do the show. I'm grateful that I get to, you know, go watch my son play. I just try to be I'm grateful and take that approach. It's it's a much better path to say I can feel like I'm light on my toes. Mm -hmm. I'm not heavy. I'm not looking over my shoulder. I'm worried about what's going on in the press or somebody tweeted something on my stuff <laughs> on my social media channels. It's just, you know, it, you got to really and today's today's athlete has a lot to contend with. Yeah. And I don't think enough people realize say I remember feeling like thank God I live out here on this beautiful farm, man. And I hear the birds and stuff and I'm like yeah. when I watch I get a little bit of anxiety for these people. I, and yeah. I know what because I know because yeah. I know right. the feeling of like that fight or flight mm. anxiety. I know yeah. that they uh you know being excited and being nervous uh, that parallels on the same wavelength, right? Which, yeah. That's what I said. That's well, it's it, it's all, yeah. If I think what what's the, it's the same, technically in your brain, it's the same emotion, being excited and nervous. nervous. It's the can same. You use, can you use the nerves? Can you right. use that adrenaline, right? That's yeah. what I said, fight or flight, that intensity. Mm -hmm. How, how can you, can you, big situations, are you the man, right? Yeah. Big Poppy right. was the man. For a long time, right? They said that guy was was neither that big big hit, big situation, and you know some guys. Um, David Freeze was another guy. He loved. Yeah. It. He did. He was like your average everyday good player, solid, yeah. fundamental. But boy, man, I tell you what, playoff time came. He was a different player, animal. A different animal. Yep. Right. And so I sit there and I go, wow, man, it's amazing because you can't really put that litmus on people's vibe like there's times like guys be like oh don't hit it to me or don't mm. pass the ball to me. <laughs> right let kobe right. shoot it let kobe or michael jordan right. shoot it you right. know the guys that were going to get the ball you know the guys that want to be in that situation and whether they succeed or fail i think that's the true test of like going i think you're a champion or i think you're a good player you know hmm. what what makes it what makes a great player being good every day Right? Consistency, so yeah. 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 
Yeah. I mean that, and, and it's, it's interesting because I think that is the, that's the true litmus test of good teams. And I think, you know, we talk about it. We, it's a good segue because we're going to be probably talking about them plenty this year, but the Los Angeles Dodgers are, have been the staple of consistency. And obviously we haven't seen them have, you know, this necessarily the success that you expect of a team like that in the playoffs, but they have been, you know, a, a team that consistently wins 95 to a hundred games. I mean, they even, they won 111 games a couple years ago and this team just top to bottom in the organization, not just the players, you know, one through nine and their one through five and their staff and the guys in the bullpen, but every aspect of that organization is on point clearly. And I think there was no better example than that today where exactly what you talked about, where there are guys that you expect to perform every day. And, you know, you have that on that team, you know, you talked about it. We were talking on the phone today. Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts. That I mean, that's as murderer's row as it gets uh, in today's right. game. And But it's like they needed a spark. Mookie Betts, home run. Freddie Freeman next at bat, home run. Otani, double. Like, it, 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 that's, that's, that's what you expect from those guys, and that's exactly what they gave you. Obviously, it's just been one game. But if that's a if that's a sign of things to come, which I it probably is because we know exactly who those guys are. They've been in the league for long enough. That team is going to be a force to be reckoned with, and I think that's an understatement. <laughs> that's a, right. and as fans of a na- of National League teams like you and I are, it's not not ideal. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, hey, listen, you know, like I said, when when you see that kind of stuff, um, yeah. I've been following. I'm a big Michael Jordan fan. I still look at the freakish stuff that that guy mm. did. And, you know, you look at athleticism, and we're going to see some freakish highlights and plays. Um, but, again, all for the cause of why these guys push themselves. And the Texas Rangers got to wear that their logo in gold because they won. Yep. And present the, the trophy at home plate. And I think when you really look at what is this all about? Why do they do this? Why do you guys do this? You know, for the feeling, to have that one chance, to have that feeling, to dump champagne, mm-hmm. smoke a cigar, do the ticket day parade, and for Texas to finally get one. And then there's other guys to say, hey, Mike Trout, I've never had that World Series yeah. championship ring on or the chance to be set up for that type of success. I would love to see these guys do freakish things because the stage is so much bigger. The drama that gets higher. We saw that in the World Baseball Classic, right? That drama yep. heightens, and that's why. If you oh, don't yeah. like baseball, you don't watch it, and you don't follow it 162, you know, great. Okay, you might watch three, four innings. But I guarantee you some of those people who don't watch, that time of year when playoff baseball is going, it's intense because every pitch, and you look at you know, like I said, this hat right here for a mm-hmm. pitcher. Three up, three down. It mm-hmm. matters when you're playing nine innings. It ma- Every out counts. Every out matters yeah. to have that chance, man. Mm. And and Texas did it so beautifully last year. I can't imagine them having that feeling today Yeah. Um, of just getting their rings, displaying that trophy. I mean, hell of a day for them, right? Yeah. An opening day, that's one Absolutely. they should forget. Absolutely. Like opening day, that's one... That one takes the cake. They they deserved. They probably had the best opening day. There's no doubt in my mind. I don't yeah. care what team you're on. They had the best opening day. You're probably right. Yeah. No matter whether win or lose, that's a that's about as cool of a moment as it gets. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Um, well, let's close out the show. I know. I know the season's already technically started, but we'll close out the show and give our predictions here because I think this is always something that people like to hear. And I. This is our. This is your opportunity and my opportunity to do. You know, maybe go against the grain a little bit. Maybe give a couple hot takes that that uh, people don't see coming. So what I want to do, we'll go down. We'll give our division winners. Um, I'll I'll guide us through it. Division winners, and then uh, we'll say who takes the cake in 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 the World Series, and uh, oh. and we'll see we'll see what goes on here. So we'll let let's start. We'll start in the American <laughs> League. We'll go AL East. Uh, who who do you think? 
Who do you got uh, in that division? I feel like Baltimore is is hungry. Um, they got unfinished business. They tasted it. Mm-hmm. Um, you you know experience uh, when you when you when you draw on that experience. Um, as long as they're healthy, I think that's yeah. the biggest thing that you can't predict is is health um, and injuries and stuff like that. But if they stay healthy and true, I think they're going to be right there again. I think they're going to be one of the top teams in baseball yep. in that division. Yep, I'm with you. I've got the Orioles winning that division as well. AL Central, the, both of the Central divisions are interesting because they're not... They always are. They are. You're exactly they right. They always are. Yeah. It's a crap they, shoot, in my opinion. And, and I, I almost think that like with both, both Central divisions, AL and NL, I think there's a pretty legitimate chance that 82 wins might get you the division. There's a chance. There's Listen, a legit man, chance. I, I, always, I, I always favor the Twins in that division. Okay. And here's why. They were always good when I played in that division. The mm. Twins, for some reason, always are a team to be reckoned with in that division. And uh, I haven't really gone in depth with knowing them in and out. I'll be very yeah. honest. That's all right. But I feel like they're always in the fight. They're always going to be there in the fight, in the, in the conversation a, in the division. Yeah, that's a vibe pick. I like it. And I think, the honestly, like they probably have, you could argue that they have the most complete team in that division uh, a lot of good uh you know some some pretty good hitters the the tough part you know their two best hitters you could argue right now are probably byron buxton and uh royce lewis royce lewis got hurt today had to leave the game opening day you hate to see that sort of thing especially a young promising player like that i'm personally going to take the cleveland guardians in that division because i love their pitching especially if um they have a young pitcher named Gavin Williams uh, pitch yep. at Eastern Carolina University, and if he can, if he can, um, I know he's had some elbow injuries, but if he can get on the mend and and get healthy this year, I like their young talent, and I think they have a lot of upside. So I'm going to take the Cleveland Guardians. I won't um, take them because I don't like their their name. Oh, you don't? You I didn't like, like their the, old? I like their old uh, yeah. fashion name. I'm old. School. I know. I know. Yeah. I can't. I can't with. Okay. The, I can't with that name. I'm not. Okay. I'm not, not there with that. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Well, how about the, sorry. That's all right. No, it's all right. We'll see. We'll see who wins in the end. Well, you know. We'll, AL we'll, West. Okay. Yeah. How about which that? Texas team. One Texas team. I think if you just I, say Texas. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got to get chance. Houston or Texas. Uh, a mm-hmm. coin toss. A, a, one A and a, you know one B. <laughs> it is. I'm going to take Houston. I think they've got, I think they're a little healthier right now. Uh, Texas has got uh, both DeGrom and Scherzer starting the year on the IL, but if they can get, if they can get them back and they're healthy, that's, I mean, talk about two of the better pitchers of all time, but yeah, I'm going to go Houston here. Coin toss, buddy. Yeah. So who's your, what, what side of the coin are you landing on then? You know, I I like Boach. I'm just going to say he's going to, he's going to be, he's going to be doing it again. And like I said, I'm going to give him the edge just because like I said, uh, I saw gold today on the field with them. I like it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So Stay golden pony boy. There you go. <laughs> Good. I like that reference. Um, give me, give me three wild card teams. So obviously you got your division winners. You had Baltimore, Minnesota, and Texas as your division winners who you got eking yep. out the wild card. Oh God. I mean, can you not, can you not discount in Tampa? Tampa's going to find a way to get in close to. Mm-hmm. It's going to be Tampa and the Yankees. Yep. Yeah. Tampa, the yeah. Yankees. Who else? Tampa, what? What? Tampa. You got one more. Um. I mean, you said it was a coin toss between. Well, that's what I said. Houston or Texas are going to be in there. Right. So They're you going probably to be take in the playoffs. Yeah. So one okay. A, one B. I don't know who's going to squeak out the division. Right. I would love to. I would love to see. Like I said, the best. Uh, do they play each other at the very end? I would love to see if that those games head to head. That mm. would be interesting to look up because these yeah. are, these are these are things like that matter in the end. I can't predict other than just I know it's tough. It's tough picking out a hat. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, that division came down to the wire last year, and the the Astros ended up squeaking it out by like a who, game or two. So who does DraftKings have as yeah, the right. favorite? <laughs> I believe that DraftKings does have the Houston Astros as the favorite in that division. But okay. well, um, if you're a betting, if you're a betting man, that's right. That's right. You're a betting um, man. 
I'm going to take uh, the three teams I've got making the wild card. I'm also going to take the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, some people looked at me funny um, when I was talking to some of my other buddies about this too. Um, I just think it's like you said, they just, every year we sleep on the Rays and we're like, okay, this is the year that they're finally, and it never happens. So I, yes, I'm going Tampa Bay Rays. I'm going to go, I'm going to take the Yankees as well. Um, I think especially if they can get Cole back, if they can tread water until they get him back, I think they'll be all right with that offense. I'm going to surprise you with the last one. A team that I think had a very interesting off season. I think the Kansas City Royals. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, and the reason I say that is because my MVP pick for this season is Bobby Witt Jr. And I think that if they're going to be a good team, I think – well, I should reverse that. If he's going to win MVP, I think the team's going to be very good. See, so. I love – Case, you're unbelievable. You go deep, dude. Like, yeah. real. Like, you <laughs> – I'm, you could many, t- I'm a dork. You could say. I don't it. know it's how many. St- <laughs> you're a baseball dork, but that's good. You got stacks of magazines next to your bed. It's okay, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You know, I love. Literally it. Literally have stacks of. Yeah, I have all of the all right. the the preview magazines. So yeah, well, let's hit the let's hit the NL now. We'll start in the you, NL you got, East where my my Metropolitans Kirk, are. But you have Tim Kirchen's, Kirchen's. You have Tim Kirchen's cell phone. You text. You guys text at night. I I'd love that. That would be very <laughs> awesome. Uh, if we can make It'll that happen, happen I'd, I'd, we'll, I'd we'll love it. We'll manifest that. I'm gonna make you. <laughs> I'm gonna meet you. Your guy there. I love it. Okay. All right. How about the uh, NL East? What do you got? I mean, I'm not sleeping on the Braves, and no. I and like I said, yeah, the, the the Braves division winners, uh, LA Dodgers division winners. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Phillies are gonna be there again, mm-hmm. um, and then. I'm sorry, AL, NL Central. I got nothing. It's another there. toss up. Uh, I got nothing there. Um, no Buckos. No Buckos. I want. They, that they're not to bad. Happen. They're not bad this year. No, they're I really, not bad. They're not. I really bad. think they I'm got something special. Yeah. I if like I said, we got O'Neill Cruz back, dude. That dude looks like holy cow. He's. I don't good. know that homer bigger. he hit today. Yeah, that was Listen, impressive. Okay, you walking into a shower with a roll this Chapman. <laughs> that guy oh. right next to you, you know, you need the bank. Can you pass the freaking, can you pass the, the Burt Plus, please? <laughs> I'm just walking out of the shower. I mean, if I'm getting a brawl, though, those guys, I'm being right there. I'm yeah. getting right next to them. It's a serious test of manhood in the shower there. With power. The, with, uh, yeah. It's fucking power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a mound visit right there with those two freak shows. Awesome, yeah. you know Make that happen. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah, turned I'll... into WWE. I mean, who fills out the uniform? Dang, whoa! Yeah. And 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 O'Neal Cruz got a new style. I mean, just cut one leg off at the groin, dude. It's like yeah. one <laughs> pant leg. It's a new style. I didn't know we're going new, new look. Yeah. yeah, man, he is special. I'm telling you, I I I I'm very high on him this year. I think he could. I think he'll be comeback uh, player of the year, maybe. Maybe come yeah. back to the I, I think maybe more than that. I think th- I would not be, it would not shock me if he's an MVP finalist. I you think he's that good. Um, no, but I, I'm awesome. with you. I'll take the Braves to win the East as much as that pains me to say they're just one of the best teams in baseball. It's just not even close. Sorry, Frank. Um, yeah, sorry, Frank. Sorry, uh, Frank. I, got the, I got the Dodgers <laughs> winning the West. I think the Cincinnati Reds are going to win the NL Central. I think they've got a lot of young young talent as well. Kind of sim- similar-ish yeah. to the Guardians, where I like their upside. Um, I love of, El- Ellie De La Cruz, there. man. I love I love that kid. I agree I love with you. watching him play. I watched him play here in Syracuse when he came to play the Syracuse Mets, and I watched him hit a ball over the left field scoreboard. And you've seen that scoreboard. It has the big outline of New York State. He hit the ball over that scoreboard. Yeah. Um, he got free salt potatoes in Syracuse for that one, right? Holy cow. Yeah, incredible. So I'm going to take him. My wild card teams, I got Phillies are going to be there, like you said. Um, I think the, uh, the San Diego Padres are going to be there as well. And then the third team I'll take um, is the Arizona Diamondbacks. I love that move that they made uh, bringing in Jordan Montgomery. I think that is uh, – they, they, I think that turned them legit, like legit, legit. Obviously, they were in the World Series last year, but – I had some questions about their staff going. Hey, into they it. had some. They had Not some. Uh, some playoff money to spend. You know, the owners get yeah. get rewarded some playoffs, some some extra cash. So, um, yeah. if they reinvested back in their team, they just did that. So, man, yeah, what a day! This was yeah. great. This was a great 
recap session. We're back, baby. Mount visit. Yes, sir. Case. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for being hey. on the show. Thank you. And for those of you that watch, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Again, you could find us on YouTube, the Mount Visit YouTube channel. Check us out there. You could do the same thing wherever you find your podcast if you just like to listen. Hit us up on social media, and we will see you next week. Thank you.